This one's for all you guys out there who work with nuts and bolts. Have you ever noticed that these worm gears look kind of like thread? Ever threaded anything with them? Well, I was thinking they might work as a bolt, and I looked around for something that would work as a nut. And it turns out, these life preservers screw on, just like that. And, once they're on, you can tug, and they don't just slip off. It's like, this is the thread, and this is a nut. And you can stack them to a certain point, but once you get too many on there, then the spacing between here doesn't quite line up with the spacing of the thread. Nonetheless, three and four kind of works pretty well. Doesn't come off that easy. Well, the next logical thing I figured if you have a bolt and a nut was to make a socket. Now this isn't probably the best. You guys could probably come up with a better socket, but as you can see, the blue piece kind of engages on where the dud is on the life preservers. And you know, it kind of works, kind of tightens. Once you get on too far, it's not a deep well socket though. So the next step, once you have your bolt and your nut, let's see if we can tighten something. How tight will it go? Well, we need a torque wrench and we've got one. Interestingly enough, guys, I've got a spring in the bottom that I can tighten and loosen using more, you guessed it, worm gears. So as I turn the base, that part moves up. So it's an adjustable torque wrench. All right, guys, let me show you how it tightens. So the head clicks like a torque wrench. It's moving on that pivot point right there. The reason you get the click is because it's using the same mechanism as a real torque wrench. Right in there is a red brick. You see it? Well, that brick right now is from flat side to flat side between this and this. And when I do this, it becomes diamond shaped. Can you see it going diamond shaped? You can just barely see in there that it goes from square to diamond. Now, with the same sides, a diamond is taller than a square. So it pushes down on this bit right here, which pushes against the spring in here, and that's how a torque wrench actually works. Look it up. That's what's inside of a real torque wrench. What else do we need? Well, we need a ratcheting mechanism. So what have I got here? Do you want to see inside? Well, I guess I'll show you. We've got our toothed two by two round, let's, let's call it. It's engaging on that part right there. And when I turn this inwards, it ratchets. It'll turn one way, but not the other way. Boy, do you like the sound of that. Now you say, what about going the other direction? Well, I got you. As long as I can, as long as I don't turn my lever too far and I can get it out of there, I can turn the other one just like that. And now it's ratcheting the other way. So that right there is loosening. So let's put it on the other setting and let's tighten our nut down. First, we're gonna need our socket. Install it on the end. Let's get our socket lined up with the bolt, I mean the nut, just like that, and let's tighten it down. Now, that's not very tight. How, how much tighter can we go before this torque wrench gives up? I 
I don't think I felt our nut move. Oh, it's still tight from when I tightened it by hand. All right, finger loose. Can you see the mechanism? Now, how tight is that? Pretty tight, actually. Guys, we got to start using this. Bolts and nuts, torque wrenches. Have you ever seen that in Lego? That's awesome.